Good morning. Welcome to another Faith Life Session. I am your host, I'll say it like that, Pastor Damaris Johnson, and I am brought, bringing this to you via the Worship Center, uh, where we worship God in spirit and in truth. And those two elements combined bring us into the ultimate calling of the life of, uh, that God had planned for his family. And that's the call to sonship. Uh, I'm going to get into that in a second. Before I do that, though, I want to welcome you. Uh, and I want to thank you for, listen, making the choice to, to be present here um, with me, which is, the, which is the first third of what I'm asking of you, what the Word of God asks of you as it relates to partnership. And I want to start off by just thanking you for choosing to partner with us in your presence and being here because being here gives you the ability to hear and everything about your faith life begins with what you consistently hear and what you consistently observe and what we want to do is bring you bring you a revelation and an understanding of the revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus and what you've been called to um, the problems you've been called to solve and how you've been called to solve those problems as you walk in the provision that God has for you, right? I hope you can, I hope you walk with me with that, right? There's a provision that comes with salvation that we must learn how to access and live from so that we can fulfill the mandate, the calling, the purpose, the mission, however you want to, whatever word you resonate with can be executed, okay? And we've been talking about in this series um, how God supplies our need, how God supplies all our need. And we want to be very clear about that because that's important. And so when you hear this, because you're here present with us, it transforms you, it changes you, it brings you to this place of power in your sonship that you have the confidence to do everything you need to do, right? Um, so we thank you for being present. The second thing, we need you to be prayerful with us. Continue to pray that the wisdom of God will be revealed to us, that the spirit of wisdom and understanding and the knowledge of him will be manifested, that we will have a clarity in understanding this revelation so that we can properly communicate it to you and make it, make it, as, make it as easy and less complicated as possible for you to grasp. Pray that. And also pray that we would um, be led by Holy Spirit in possessing the territories and going into the different territories with the gospel that he's called us to go into, right? Um, so be, be prayerful for that. And then thirdly, the, the, the final piece of the third, which um, I wouldn't say last in the sense of order, but, but to help us to promote it. And what we mean by promoting it is for you to give to this ministry so that we can do everything that's required uh, that's associated with the work of this ministry. Um, and, and that is, that is through your tithe, through your offering, uh, through a monthly pledge, through a one-time gift, whatever it is, you, you are led by the Spirit of God and um, you got to be a part of that process. Like, you, like, like if, we had to, if we did have to put them in, in some kind of order, um, I would definitely say presence would be first because without you being here, uh, you can't get out of what you need. But then, uh, like your giving, like like your your connection, your partnership, because that's what Philippians chapter four, nine, chapter four, verse nineteen is all about. It was about partnership. Paul was giving a church who, when everybody else said no, they said yes, and they decided to partner with Paul and enter into this partnership with Paul, which then aligned them, positioned them, to be able to live from, or even hear this particular verse. And so we want to break that verse down to you and continue to bring this verse to you so that you can have a clarity in how you can live from this verse on purpose, intentionally. Like, it's like, it's like a part of your life. And so we, we're getting into the meat of the matter. And so we're going to continue to do that today. Um, and thank you for your partnership and, and being with us. And, and it's going to be a blessing to your life, right? All right. Um, we talk about partnership and we talk about giving. And we always like to give you some of the most important points when it comes to giving and how that, how that, how that should equate to an um, abundance in your life. And we start with this. Um, we have to deal with the notion of, of um, your responsibility and your role in the manifestation of the, of the provision of our provider. 
um, and we say this often, but your provider has a provisional system. There's a system. Your provider has a provisional system. Um, we see that from the very beginning. You have to understand how that system operates, and then you, you, you actually, we were actually called to be stewards of that system. So we have to understand the system, the mechanism and the system and how it operates, and then we have to steward that so that we can live in the abundance that that system produces, right? Um, in our day, uh, that would mean we would have to get, be engaged in a, in, a, um, in a mechanism, an asset, a system that produces um, consistent income for us and eventually get to the point to where it can be scaled to where we don't have to be engaged in it uh, like we did to initiate it, right? And so Adam started his life from that perspective. Adam started his life from the perspective of having to steward something that God was engaged in and put in motion and put in process for it to perpetually provide for Adam. Like Adam, Adam but all that was destroyed. Now we, we have to play a role in, in reestablishing that, right? Um, that's why the Lord of God says like this, by giving you the power to get wealth. In Deuteronomy 8, 18, we've been talking about that, um, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to our fathers as it, as it is this day. And once we recognize that, that he's given us the power to get the wealth. The wealth is in the earth. The wealth is, 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 not, is not outside of the realm of the earth. The wealth or the things that produce the wealth are already in the earth. The assets, the leverage that we need is, is in the earth, right? It's already here. So he's given us the power to, that word get there is actually a word that speaks to a production, to produce it, to orchestrate it, to, um, to manufacture it. A man using his, uh, his faculties, his ability to, 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 to put factory in motion to, to manifest it. So he's given us the power to get it. We just got to know what that power is. Now, we break that down for you in several different ways. Um, in, in, other, in other lessons, right? Uh, the other thing is, we combine that with Proverbs eleven sixteen, And it, where it talks about a gracious woman, that word gracious means stylish, pleasant, elegant, and ingenious, beautiful woman, retaineth honor. That word honor represents exaltation and abundant riches. He said, but a strong man, an awe-inspired man, um, one with great knowledge and wisdom. One with great knowledge and wisdom. One with a knowledge and wisdom. So let's just let's, let's, let's talk about that, right? So now we're talking about, we're talking about um, uh, wealth creation. And it begins with me receiving and taking the responsibility that God has given me the power to get wealth. And that connected to that because a man of great knowledge and wisdom retains riches, possesses riches. It's, there has to be a level of, of, of knowledge and the ability to live from that knowledge in my life's situation. It, it requires me ascertaining a level of knowledge in a particular, in a particular, in this case, field, field within the marketplace, me attaining a specific level of knowledge. And and we would use the word niche in this particular case. And then and then learning how to live from that knowledge and 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 people and then help other people live from that knowledge to solve their particular issues, to solve their problems. Like that's one of the strongest entrepreneurial skill sets we can have, is we have to have a level of knowledge and wisdom, and that word knowledge speaks of an understanding, a level of understanding and wisdom so that we can not only solve the issues in our life, but we can help other people do that. When you do that at a level, at a level, um, people will be willing to pay you at a certain level. If you do that at the high school level, they'll be willing to pay you at a high school level. If you can do that at a college level, they'll be willing to pay you at a college level. If you can do it at a professional level, people will be willing to pay you at a professional level. And so it's, it's our responsibility to embrace the idea of us having this power to get wealth. And then it's also our responsibility to ascertain the knowledge and the understanding and wisdom in a particular field. Now that field can be associated with your purpose and what God has called you to do. Everything is about purpose, right? Um, and, then, and then once you discover your purpose, now you can set your affections and your passions upon the fulfillment of that purpose. And you do that, part of doing that is you ascertaining this, this knowledge and wisdom, right? We see this play out in Solomon's life. He said, Lord, I need the wisdom. His purpose was to govern the, God's people. He said, well, I need wisdom to do that. And once God began to reveal to him some things and he ascertained that wisdom, now, now the wealth and the riches 
followed after that. So it's, it's the principle applies for us in our life. So as you give this morning, don't give just with a expectation, just, just because I gave, God's going to bless me. No, there's other things required to be. That's just the beginning of us living in this abundance is that we have to embrace this, this I have a power. Listen, say this. Say, say, I have a power to get wealth. Like the power to become wealthy is already inside of me. I have that power. And, and now you, you have to, the more perfect way would, for, would be for you to manifest the wealth through purpose, right? And, and knowing that gives you a level of knowledge and wisdom, and I, I mean, gaining a level of knowledge and wisdom um, so that you can bring value to other people's lives. And that's how you grow and build. Um, and that's, again, stay tuned to it because there's other aspects to, to, to the, the entrepreneurial skill set that's, that's needed um, in life so that you can build the world God would have you to build. Uh, with that, we want to thank you for your, your giving, and we want to make a declaration um, that is associated with your wealth creation uh, strategies. Uh, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, I thank you that I'm anointed to prosper. Like, you got to be, you got to, like, you got to embrace this. I'm anointed to prosper. My eyes are open to see creative ways and increase financially. Like, you got to have a, a there's a, there's a creativity that, that's innate in us that enables us to recognize opportunities. My ears are open to hear the best, best deals, and my heart is pure so that you can channel finances through me. That's important. I am on the path of perpetual increase as I enter into my wealthy place. Wealth and riches are in my house. I declare I am the righteousness of God. I've sown and my, and, and for a supernatural abundance, and I, will, and I live in the daily expectation. To live in the daily expectation is increase is a necessity. Money comes to me. My nature attracts money and wealth. Fear of lack has been broken and have no power over me. I hear my father's voice and I voice of intimidation and limitation. I choose not to follow. I am free from debt. I'm the lender and not a borrower. The wealth of the wicked is being transferred to me and I, as I commit to establish the kingdom of God in the earth. I am ready to be a distribution center. I am my life as a distribution channel for God to work in this earth. I thank you, Father, that daily you loaded me with benefits. I'm anointed to prosper. I am in your mind because you want me to increase more and more. Abundance is your will for me because it pleases me. It, I'm sorry. It pleases you when I prosper. I call increase, abundance, and prosperity to come to me now in the name of our Lord Jesus. And I will never be broken day day in my life in Jesus' name. I want to thank Apostle Mike Freeman for that declaration. Um, it stirred some things up in me. I figured I'd share with you. Now, here we go. Let's dive into this thing. Uh, once again, welcome to the Faith Life Session for, brought to you by the Worship Center. Welcome to all my Worship Center family. If you're watching via Facebook, YouTube, uh, Zoom, we want to thank you. We want to welcome you. We want to bring you into this partnership. We need you to partner with us. Presence, prayerful, and promotion help us to do this thing through your giving. Uh, prayerful, I mean, uh, presence helps to, so, you can, so you can hear. Um, pr uh, prayerful, so that we can walk together and, and, and possess the territory God has for us. And then promote us so you can give through your tithe, your offering, your, your monthly pledge, your one-time gift, so that we can have everything we need so that we can do the work of the ministry, right? Um, now, you go to Philippians, I'm sorry, you go to, uh, yeah, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. We're going to work our way there because I have some things that, that, you, that you need to walk into that verse with. And ultimately, it comes down to uh, purpose, ultimately, right? Like when you, think about, when you think about God's, I'll call it God's big idea, when you think about God's desire for um, the earth and mankind, it all centers around a purpose that God had that would, that would include his partnership with sons, with the spirit of sonship in the earth, right? Notice how I said that. Um, God wanted to see earth and, and this particular territory resemble the functionality and the operational structures in heaven. He wanted the kingdom's governmental order to be established in the earth. There was, a, there was some stuff, some darkness, some chaos, some confusion that had taken place. Um, we know God didn't create the earth dark and void and without form and shape and chaotic and confused, uh, but he created it so that it might be inhabited. Tit. Yeah, that there may be a, an inhabitation by man. And the idea of that inhabitation is a, is a marriage between man and the resources in the earth. That's why God starts showing where all the resources was. He starts showing them where the water was, where the gold was, where the silver was, where the food was. He starts showing them all the resources that he would need in order to create this utopic 
or let me say it like this, this place of pleasure. Earth was designed to be this place of pleasure for man uh, to dwell and, and fellowship, right? Um, and there's a purpose associated to that. Everything, everything God does, this does, it does according to this purpose for, 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 for him and his sons to enjoy what he's created. And the call is to sonship. Jesus came, Jesus came to demonstrate and express the level of sonship that we've been, that we have access to. Now, that don't mean we're going to live it like he did or, or experience it like he experienced it, but that don't also don't mean we don't have access to it. Just because so-and-so didn't live up to it don't mean I can't live up to it. Right. I heard a, I heard a, I heard a, uh, uh, a preacher today bashing the biblical concept of decreeing and declaring by saying, um, we take that too far and uh, over the top, and we 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 um, we say things that we shouldn't say, because what happens if you say it and it don't work? We make God look bad. No, it ain't no God. It ain't no God at all. I listen. The Bible says, "Let God be true." And every man, right? See. It's not, it's, not, it's not on God because I'm not operating at the level of sonship that he's called me to. That's what this whole thing is about. Philippians 4, 9, he, he supplied everything we need to function in, 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 at a level of sonship. See, we, we, we associate that verse with the outcomes of, um, of our sonship. When really it's focused, it's first got to be focused on sonship, right? And all that comes with sonship. That's how... See, that's how he supplied your need, is through sonship. Sons have all their needs supplied. What need did Adam have that God didn't supply? As it was related to his purpose. None. Right down to his woman. None. So when we think about it, the call to sonship built into the sonship is the solution, is, is, is all your needs being supplied. The moment we step outside of sonship, you, you misalign yourself. Now you got to fend for yourself. So it's important that, one, we hear this message, this gospel of sonship, which is what, which is what Jesus really preached and demonstrated. Instead of this gospel of servitude, now, now I don't have time to go into the particulars of being able to discern the difference or, 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 or tell the difference, but... The essence of it is this, this, this false empowerment of God and this detriment, disempowerment of man. What I mean by false empowerment is that, is that everything you do, everything associated with what I do, um, I give God credit for. And I know that sounds, you know, if you don't have the ear for that, but, but like, like you don't have to give God credit for waking you up this morning. So, so, so if, 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 if that's the case, if God wakes everybody up in the morning, then, then some folk, you question, why you wake him up today? Because they don't go off and did something. Right? That's, that's, that's that. That's that. What we have to see is that God, everything, everything God has ever done, and this, this is mind-blowing, everything God has ever done, as it relates to this earth, the bees, the flowers, the plants, the animals, the everything he's ever created, made, manifested, was for the value, purpose, pleasure of mankind. God is big in the pleasure. Was for the, let me say it like this, for the prosperity and pleasure of man, his sons. Everything was created to bring to either bring some kind of value, pleasure, purpose to man. So when we think about sonship, like that's what we have to think. When it comes to the needs being supplied, it's built into sonship, and that's what Paul was bringing to the church at Philippi, right? Um, is that so? So let that let that that prevailing spirit of sonship lead us into this particular verse as we talk about. Um, 
verse 19, right? Uh, Wednesday night we left off, we left off breaking down verse 19. I'm just going to just touch on that real quick. Then I'm going to get into some other thought um, so that you can, you can really begin to see. And we're going to deal with one of the aspects of what, uh, how God supplies our need. It says, uh, verse, 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 let's just jump in because I know I can't go through all this again. Let's go to verse 19. It says, but um, my God shall supply, right? But my God shall supply. We told you that word supply right there speaks of the perpetuation of, of the perpetuation of a consistent fruit, or con of the perpetuation of something reoccurring, uh, uh, the perpetuation of you being fully furnished. Right. So let's just say if I have a if I have a um, uh, a need in my business, if I have a having a, a staffing need. Right. Um, I can I can be positioned so that I can always have a, a, adequate staff because I got the resources to pay them. That's just one of the examples. Right. Um, my guy shall supply that word supply means to replete the cause. Of, it's, it's a it's a constant constant su su supply to fully furnish. Um, All, what am I, I gotta find? Oh, all your need, right? So that the word need there, we broke that down. That word need there, uh, we, and we gotta look at it from from a son's some son's mind. It, it's a, it's really an economic term, and it's a term that speaks to the business affairs and the fulfillment of the necessities of your business affairs, right? You, 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 this can both be applied to your household need and your business need, right? Your entrepreneurial need. And when we when we see it like that, now that that changes that changes the whole thought of what Paul was trying to communicate to these Philippians who were in a position where they had they had they were coming out of deep poverty, right? Um, there's an ingenuity necessary in order for us to overcome poverty. Uh, he says, "I'll supply all your need," um, which speaks to the economic necessity of of your business affairs. Now, here's the most important verse: according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. This is the crux of the matter. What we cannot do is bring a unrenewed mind, a carnal mind, a secularly influenced mind into what the riches of Christ are. When we think riches, most of us think money. We think dollars. And that's okay. That's a part of it. But that's, again, that's the end outcome of what the riches in Christ are. Christ's riches is the thing that produces natural riches. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to look at several scriptures that bring out this, 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 this idea of what Christ is rich with. What the riches, what the Word of God identifies as the riches of Christ, which helps to supply all of our need. Oh, man, I, that, that, I, that, like, like, like. If I'm listening to me, I'm already, I'm, 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 I'm accelerating. I'm taking off. I'm taking off. Because in my mind, oh my goodness, that's the, that, like that, that just broke that, that barrier of me thinking that the riches of Christ is dollars. No, I mean, you'd be surprised. I've, I've talked to believers that, that sitting, you know, they think God got all the money, all the money is in God's control. Like I can bring send, send somebody to my house and drop off a million dollars whenever he wants to. That's uh, I don't want to say what that is, but but we like the mindset is the riches the riches that Christ has in His glory are the elements that helps to supply our natural needs in the earth. If I don't know what those riches are and how to leverage those riches and how they influence my, my ability to build wealth, I'll live in poverty. 
I'll live my life in, without waiting on God to do something that he's never promised. I shouldn't say he never promised. To do something that, that I don't understand how those promises will be manifested in my life. We're talking about how God supplies our needs. And the supply of those needs are in accordance to his riches. My question to you is, what are the things that Christ is written, what the word of God says Christ is rich with? Now, let me go examine those things and find out just how those things that he's rich with produces my needs being supplied. Here we go. First verse we're going to look at is Romans chapter 2, verse 4. And Paul was going through the revelation that was given to him as it relates to the salvation that we have, which is, which is beyond great, marvelous, so great, right? And he, was get, he had gotten to the point to where um, he was revealing the, 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 the mind of God and the, and the operation of God. And he, and he get to verse 4, and he says, oh, oh. Wait, actually, you know what? I want to read that. Um, I want to read that. Romans chapter 4. I want to read that, those first verses for what, for some reason. It just, um, it said, what shall we say that Abraham has found? Is that right? Oh, no, 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 no. For chapter 2. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's the context. It says, therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself for Thou that judges doest the same thing. thing. This is, but we are sure, and um, that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that thou judges them that which do such things and doest not the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? He says, O or despisest thou, or despisest thou the riches of His goodness and forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. So one of the first things we see as it relates to what Christ is rich with in, from his seat of glory is goodness. How can the goodness of God lead to all my need being supplied? See the question is how can I how can I how can I live from this goodness or access how can I access this goodness and how I, how do I live from this goodness so that I can see it manifested in my life? This 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 attribute this this um, asset of goodness is something that that I I have to live from. On the surface, it means loving kindness. On the surface, it means it means to. There's a level of kindness that, that we can access, that we can live from, that is rooted in, in Christ Jesus that will, that will produce for us and, and, and that, will, that will produce in our life a full supply of need. You can just be kind to people. You can be kind. There's a level of kindness that I can demonstrate in my business. There's a level of, there's a level of kindness that I can demonstrate in my offer to people. There's a level of kindness that I can that I can present to people and give them. A, that's a very kind offer. That they'll accept and then they'll exchange their money for my solution, because my offer there's a kindness associated with it. Some folks offer it makes you offer that's just not kind. There's no love behind it. It's all about greed and them taking advantage of you. You can craft as an entrepreneur. You can craft your your solution in a way, and you can wrap it in a level of kindness that makes it irresistible, right? There's a, there's a, there's a loving kindness associated with it. We, we can, we, we can, well, that's what God did. Let me just say it like that. That's, that's what God did, right? The revelation, the revelation of the goodness of God, well, let's just, let's just go back there. We find, we find, we find, um, First and foremost, one of the first places it was referenced was in, in, in back in Moses' day, right? In Exodus chapter 33. Uh, let's just look at it. Verse 11 says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. That's important. Ah, that's important. That speaks to the intimacy. 
that speaks to the intimacy that Moses had with God. That speaks to the intimacy that sons are called to. There needs to be this face and face in this face to face interaction with God consistently. As a man speaketh to his friend, covenant word friend, and he turned again into the camp. But the, his servants, Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, he said, Lord, now remember this is when, um, you know, Moses was, was, was dealing with a whole lot from the people, right? And he, he was ready to, you know, put him away, but in the same time he's ready to, to lead him as God called him. He says, see thou saith unto me, bring up this people. You give me this assignment. And thou hast let me know whom thou will send with me. You show me, you show me who my who my leadership team will be, right? So you may be in a situation where you know your assignment, you got your leadership team. He says, He says, Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. You also said that I also found grace in thy sight. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight. And consider that this nation is thy people. And those are some, Lord, help me lead these people to walk where you, asked, where you told me to take them. Then the Lord said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Oh, oh man, this speaks to just the rest that comes with the presence of God. The presence of God can be found in all your needs being supplied. There's, just, there's a rest when you know you're going to have more money at the end of the month than you do bills. There's a rest that comes when you know you'll be able to supply the need for your friends and family whenever it arises. Then Moses said, listen, if that person don't go with me, don't send me. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that thou goest with us, so shall we be separated. And I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of this earth. Listen, if you don't, if you don't, if you ain't gonna do this, don't send us up there, right? Verse 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Lord, I thank you that you know me by name. And he said, I beseech thee. Moses said, I beseech thee. Show me thy glory. I'm going somewhere with me. Stay with me. God said, okay. I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Now here's the revelation. Here's what we got to get to. And I, I want to give us a revelation of this goodness. I will make all my, all my goodness pass before thee. Well, what was he talking about? He says, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. So we're talking about the, the, the goodness, the goodness, God's goodness passing before him. And then he says, I will proclaim. The, uh, the name of a person represents the power and the authority of a person. So he says, I'm going, to, I'm going to show you all my goodness, which is going to be embodied in me proclaiming, demonstrating to you the power and the authority that's associated with my name. Then he says this. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. What is that in reference to? That's in reference to the new covenant in Christ Jesus. You go read Hebrews. This is associated with the new covenant. So we're going we're gonna to tie this all together when it's all said and done. So he, 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 you're going to see he's going to show Mo, his good, he's going he's to make all of his goodness pass before Moses. In other words, Moses, that were, the idea of something passing before you is that you, you, you get a revelation of it. You're going to see it. God's going to reveal some things to him. All this goodness passing before this, this means I'm going to give you a revelation and an understanding of the power and the authority that's associated with who I am. This is connected to this second reference, which is to the, the, the new covenant that we have in Christ Jesus. He says, this, but thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. He's obviously he's talking about physically. Because he told him, he, 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 he spoke to him face to face, right? Which leaves us 
having to need or having to live by faith. Verse 21. And the Lord said, Behold, because you can't see my face, there is a place by me. This is a reference of, to being in Christ Jesus. There's a, pl there's a place, there's a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon the rock. We know the rock is Christ. This is a reference to Christ. There's a place by me. This is a reference to Christ. And thou shalt stand upon the rock. This is also another reference to Christ himself. And it shall come to pass while my glory pass by thee. Okay, now we see glory is associated with goodness because he said, I will cause my goodness to pass by thee. He says, when my glory pass by thee. So glory and goodness one and the same. We can say this, when my goodness pass by thee, I will put thee in the cleft of the rock. This is, this is a reference to being in Christ Jesus. Okay, um, and will cover thee with my hand. And I will take away mine hand, what, and thou shalt see. This is, this is a reference to Revelation. And thou shalt see my back. Back represents that which is behind me, that which has already happened, that which has already been finished. So this is a reference to the finished work of God in Christ Jesus. But my face you not see, right? So this is a reference to, to the finished work that God had finished. Both, both in Christ Jesus, and we're going to find out what, it, what, the, other, what, the, what the other finished work was um, in the beginning, right? Um, that, that finished work that God was referencing to Moses was creation. Yeah, remember Moses wrote, wrote the book of Genesis. And we know this, this, that, that there's nothing that we have, we have in Christ that we didn't have in the beginning, right? This passed by me. And the revelation that God gave Moses of his goodness was creation. And we're going to look at that, right? Um, Psalm 33 verse 5 says, He that loveth righteousness and judgment, the earth is full of, his, of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Psalm 107, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. And his wonderful work toward the children of men. The work he did in creation was for man. Right? Let, let, let's go back and look at Genesis. Come on, say we got people, we got two more minutes. Stay with me. Um, <clears throat> the first thing we need to ask ourselves, this question is this, but is is when God went through Genesis and he kept saying things were good, things were good, things are very good. You ever ask yourself the question, good for who? And good for what? Good for who? And good for what? In the beginning, it says, In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, we know God didn't create the earth, the heaven and the earth void, because Isaiah 48, verse 15 tells us that God created the earth to be inhabited by man. The idea of us being inhabited is for man to partner with the resources in the earth to produce this 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 society that that would that would be a representation of of the kingdom of God's society, right? Um, and it says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good, and divided the light from the day. Good for what? And good for who? good for his man. Good for his man to fulfill his purpose in this earth. Light is good for man's health. Light is good for man's life. Like light is good for so many things. We're discovering more and more, science is discovering more and more that all of God's creation was designed to bring some level of value and enhancement to the capacity and capabilities of man. So just look at that. God saw the light, that it was good for his man and for man's purpose. And divide the light from the darkness. And God called the day, he called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 6, and God said, let there, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let, the waters, let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and he called the even and, and the evening and the morning was the second day. 
And God said, let the, let the waters go under the heavens, be gathered together under one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And verse 10 says, and God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. The earth was good for who? And good for what? We must ask ourselves. See, we talked about it earlier. Um, God's ultimate desire was to bring man, man a level of prosperity and pleasure. While he, while, he, while he fulfilled this assignment. So in God's mind, everything that he was putting together right now was good for that ultimate purpose. So if you don't understand God's ultimate purpose, then this, this won't align properly to you. His ultimate purpose was to be in partnership with the spirit of sonship to manifest the kingdom of God or to establish the kingdom of God in the earth. And God is now going through the process of, of supplying man's need for that to be fulfilled. Give him everything he needs in order for that to happen. Verse 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit yielding, and the fruit, and the fruit, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and the herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. We got, a, we got a series coming up where we're going to break that down. Oh, I wish I could get into it now, but I, it'll, just, it'll just it'll throw me off my, my, my course here. But you see here, that verse, that verse 11 and 12 is God's, is how God, is the mechanism of how God supplies our need. Through, through the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its own kind, whose seed is in itself. Who, that, that means that, that, that speaks to the scalability of this, 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 creative, this creative mechanism God has in place. It speaks to the scalability of it. Who seed is in itself. That means you'll never run out of whatever it is this thing is producing, the fruit that it's producing. It's never ending. So the, the goodness that Christ is rich with all these elements are built into it. All these, the, the ability for something to produce after its kind, your ability to scale whatever it is in business, like all these elements are built into it. This is how the goodness of God is a part of how God will supply our need. Because when God gives you something, or when God, when God, when God partners with you on, on a particular endeavor, it's going to be able to, you're going to be able to scale it to the point to where it never produces, it never stops producing what you needed to produce in order for, for you to have what it is that you want to have. Man, I hope I'm communicating properly, right? Um, verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass after yielding seed, yielding seed, I'm sorry. Um, verse 13. And the evening and the morning was the third day. And God said, let there be light in the firmament, and heaven to be able to divide the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. And let them be for lights and in the firmament, and for heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the great light to rule the, rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God, said, and God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So now we're talking about the sun, we're talking about the moon, we're talking about the star. All of those things are designed to, to bring a level of goodness, value to man. Like we know, like just, just, look, just research what the, the importance of the sun to man's health, right? Research, research the, the power of the moonlight and what that, what that means to, to the atmosphere and what it means to, to, to the earth and, and, the, and the waters and things like that. Just, just research, like all of these things are, are good for man to fulfill his purpose. Like, like, sun, the sun itself, the sun itself was designed to, to perpetuate man's life forever. And even in the morning, on the fourth day, right? Um, and I gotta stop there, I'm sorry. I gotta stop right there, because if I get into these next four verses, uh, I, I won't, I won't, I will, I'll keep you too long. And, and what I want to do is I want to be able to 
to um, pick up from here on Wednesday and then get into the next the next verse that deals with or the next as the next aspect of what Christ is rich with. But the goodness of God, the goodness of God, and we're gonna we're gonna give you a little bit more on how to live from this goodness, how will lead you into having all your needs supplied. It ain't about dollars and cents. It's about the spiritual empowerment of sons in the earth so that they then can manifest or live from the space of having all their needs supplied. You're beloved. You're blessed. You're destined to prosper. And you are more than a conqueror in Christ our Jesus. Thank you for your partnership. God bless you. And we'll see you on Wednesday night.